about Joan catching so many colds. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Wheeler. I'll see that she doesn't. And now, if you please... You must insist on her continuing to wear her warm underwear. Spring can be very treacherous, you know. Suffering cats. What did you say, dear? I say, Patricia, I can't stop now. I've got to see Matron. Have you seen this? What? About the new teacher. What about her? It's a him. Him? Him? You don't mean to say her master's coming to Littleton. Not coming. According to this, he's here. Miss Amelia Lightfoot, having resigned, Literature and art will now be taken by Mr. Arnold Dixon, Doctor of Literature, Bachelor of Arts. Do you think he's a Bachelor too, or only of Arts? <laughs> Isn't it thrilling? He's probably as dull as ditch water. The only men they ever allow in this place have warts on their noses and bald heads. They say that masters are much more severe. Rot. My sister who's at Wallingham says they're much nicer. And you can do as you like. And that depends upon what you like to do. I wonder how old he is. What does it matter what age he is? Men are all the same. Some squeak, some growl, some roar. But at heart, they are all very small boys. She should know. All girls in the assembly hall. I suppose that's to meet the hero. <laughs> enjoyed your Easter holidays and benefited by them and that you're now ready to put the maximum effort into your work and games this term. 
I've asked you to come here this afternoon for a special reason. Although, of course, the summer term doesn't start officially until tomorrow morning. Miss Lightfoot, as you know, resigned at the end of last term to take up a position abroad. And as Littleton is a modern and, I hope, progressive finishing school, we decided, as those of you who have looked at the notice board will have seen already, to introduce a master here in Miss Lightfoot's place to teach literature and the history of art. We have been exceedingly fortunate in securing the services of a very distinguished scholar who is well known as the author of several books on the old masters. Those of you who were studying Italian art last term should certainly know his book on Botticelli. I sincerely hope that every one of you will take the fullest advantage of his teaching and accord him your wholehearted cooperation. Mr. Arnold Dixon. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sorry, hello, <laughs> young ladies. I don't propose to make a speech. I only want to thank you for the welcome that you've given me. It's going to be a new experience for me to teach girls, just as it's going to be a, a new experience He's for you to be taught by a master. It's a bit pompous. But be that as it may, I see no reason why we shouldn't get on very well together. Oh, do I, sweetie pie? What a pity he isn't a chef. That's what's needed here. I hope you enjoy the subjects, the lives and works of the great painters and poets and authors. It's a change from old Lightfoot. It's a profoundly absorbing study. I can only say in conclusion that I'm looking forward to my work here and I wish you all a happy and successful term. It would be better without nurses. But how could we miss sleeping? You, you love him already, you? Oh, yes. You see, he's my father. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. for your affections turned up. No damage, I hope. Well, there's another scratch on the back legs. But the men swear they didn't do it. Oh, poor old Joanna. Oh, there are so many chips and scratches. Which is the new one, Mummy? That's what the men want to know. Oh, dear, I do hope you two aren't ravenous. But, well, really, I'm still unpacking. I say, Mummy, it's a lovely school. You should have heard the way the girls cat Daddy. And so they should. Julie, be a dear, and go and put the potatoes on, will you? I do. Oh, and Julie. While you're there, open a tin of baked beans. That is, if you can find a tin opener. Righty-o. 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 Say very well or anything you like, but not righty-o. Sounds like a butcher boy. Okay. Okay. All comes from seeing too many films. Do you want the piano in there, Mum? Yes, yes, that'll be all right. Yeah. Well, how did it go? Oh, all right. Miss Hallen introduced me, and I said a few words to them. Short, and I hope to the point, and they applauded politely. <laughs> and you were scared stiff. Absolutely petrified. <laughs> ah, there's my chair. You know, this is a nice little place. I think we're going to be happy here. I have the same feeling. I love it already. Oh, thank you, Tom. For weeks, the old lady's been out for fair weather. And now, with summer on the way, she has to go inside. Will you hang it up for me, Daddy? Somewhere near the front door? Mm -hmm. Yes, later on, after dinner. Oh, you would have laughed, Mummy, if you'd heard the girls' remarks when they saw Daddy's name on the notice board, wondering what he was going to be like. <laughs> well, now they know. The girl next to me at assembly said he'd be better without glasses. What impudence without my glasses, isn't it? Do you know I think I agree with her? I've said so more than once. What else did she say? Nothing. Oh, something about you being half asleep. I don't know what she meant. Anyway, I'm telling tales out of school. Uh, Arnold, do you think this is the best place for the piano? Yes, I should think so. There's no room anywhere else, is there? Do play something, Mummy? Oh, darling, I'm much too tired. Besides, my hands are absolutely filthy. How many pupils are you going to have in Middleton, Mummy? Well, Miss Helen said I could take three. The most advanced, of course. I might be able to get some more, on a commission basis. <laughs>
already someone sitting next to you. Would you please move up there? But I sat here last term. Oh, no, please don't move for me. I'm only a new girl. Won't you? For Mr. Dixon's daughter. Well, I hope you don't mind. Please don't treat me differently because of my father. It's all right, you won't be. What's all that doing, hitching up alongside that new girl? She's the old boy's daughter. Oh, I already smell something cooking below deck. Now, I have here a list of all your names. And I think the best way for me to get to know you is for you to tell me your names when you answer my questions. I understand from Miss Helen that you're accustomed to being called by your Christian names. As I've been teaching boys recently, I shall find that rather difficult to remember at first. One thing I should like to make quite clear. I expect you to keep order and discipline in class and not make me have to enforce it. I hope you won't take advantage of the fact that I can't use the same disciplinary methods with you as I could with members of the opposite sex. <laughs> I'm sure if we understand each other from the beginning, we all get on very well. I like you. I believe that last term you began studying the lives of the early 19th century poets. <laughs> So you will have already realized how closely those lives, if not their actual work, were related to each other. This term, I propose to continue with Shelley. I wonder how old he is. Will you repeat that question, Ted? Now, if any of you have any questions, would you please stand up? First of all, what is your name? Ivy Morrison. I, I merely wondered how old Shelley was. If you mean at the time of his death, he was 29. My age is quite irrelevant. You all studied Lee Hunt last term, so you should recall the tragic circumstances of Shelley's untimely death. He was returning Wasn't home it when Shelley crossed a lake corner in an open sailing boat, a two-ton ballast torbay rig, to welcome Lee Hunt to Italy? Uh, yes. To be more precise, it was after he'd had a week's visit with Lee Hunt in Pisa. He and his friend Williams were sailing home across the bay, and they were never seen alive again. Byron named the boat Don Juan. Don Juan. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Arlette Serum. T-E-S-S-E-R-E-A-U. Hmm? Stand up and you speak to me, please. You're French. Oui, monsieur. In my study at the end of the corridor, you'll find a pile of Shelley books. Go and get them for me, will you? You expect me to fetch your books for you? I thought that a gentleman fetched things for a lady, not the other way about. No, the pupil fetches things for our master. Hurry up. Sankey. Isn't Mrs. Dixon a beautiful pianist? I wonder how Mr. Dixon is getting on with his first lesson. No doubt it is most instructive for all concerned. What are you implying, Miss Sankey? I don't think it right that a man should be thrown in amongst a lot of young girls. Thrown in? Am I to believe you feel there's something immoral about it? I admit I have my misgivings about the experiment, Miss Helen. In the past, whenever a visiting master has come to the school, a chaperone has always been present at the lessons. In the case of a music master giving a private lesson, yes. But Mr. Dixon's position is quite different. And I want the girls to learn to accept him as a resident member of the staff, one of ourselves, who will, so to speak, share in their daily life and interests. It's up to you, of course, Miss Hallam, but... But isn't he rather young? Oh, come, come, Sankey. However susceptible schoolgirls may be, Mr. Dixon is a serious and studious married man with his own daughter in the school. Married, yes. But what kind of a woman? An ex-professional pianist who dresses more like a film actress than a school teacher's wife. I'm sure your fears are quite unfunded. Well, I sincerely hope so. 
We shall see. Shelley was a great reformer. He was passionately resolved to try and improve the existing conditions of mankind. Perhaps no poet was ever fired with such a genuine inspiration. Lee Hunt once described Please, him sir? as... Which is Lee Hunt's most famous poem? Well, I suppose one of the best known that you'll find in most of the anthologies is called Jenny Kisner. Now, what's your name? Jenny. <laughs> Born in 1792, when the French Revolution was at its height, he grew up at a time when the Prince Regent was... What's your name? <laughs> All right, you may swallow first. Now, tell me your name. Bessie Spendlove. Well, this isn't a cafeteria. I know. Haven't you had any breakfast? Yes, but I never get enough to eat. So our time is nearly up, you'll be able to finish your meal outside. I hope our next lesson will be less interrupted. For preparation, I suggest you write a summary of all I've said this morning. All I've said, that is, on the subject of Shelley. Arlette! I didn't give you permission to go. The bell is rung. Yes, I know, I heard it. Sit down, please. Thank you. You may go now. Arlette! I'm sorry. I thought you said your father was always in a good temper. He's really terribly kind and sweet. It's just that in school he insists on discipline. And out of school? Oh, you'd love him. Really, you would. But I think he hates me. Rubbish. You must come to our house one day and see him properly. Properly? Oh, no, no. But you must come to my house one Sunday. Next Sunday? We are friends. Of course. Good. There's one girl, a French girl. She's got to be handled rather carefully. If she was a boy, the remedy would be obvious and simple. A good sound spanking. Mm. Yeah, she's conceited and spoiled and ultra sophisticated. Or tries to be. Altogether rather, rather disturbing influence. On, on the class, I mean. What's her name? Arlette. Arlette Tessera. She's been very kind to me. I was talking to your mother. Yes, I, I know. I didn't mean to interrupt, but... Well, Arlette's really rather a nice girl, and... Well, she's from Paris. Well, that's no excuse for being impertinent. I don't think she's the kind of girl I like her to be friends with. You mean you don't want me even to speak to her? No, I didn't say that. I just said I didn't want you to make a close friend of her. It would be rather interesting to know what this Arlette thinks about you. I think he's insufferable. Vain, spoiled, stupid, boring, badly dressed. And that moustache, those glasses. And nobody who thinks he's wonderful. Because he can order about a lot of girls. But he'll see. I'll show him. I'd back him against you any time. Then you would lose. Well, I'll put my money on Arlette. There's no holding her once she gets underway. Is there, Arlette? I have never failed yet. Oh, Ronald's a tougher proposition than a pimply schoolboy who'd fall for anything. I don't waste my talents on pimply schoolboys, as you call them. And I fancy that Monsieur Dixon, though he does not know it, is just arriving at a romantic age. She's got something there. Middle age, when a man stops trying to dodge temptation and starts checking up to see if he's missed any. I've always been told that the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, Bess. Don't you ever think of anything but food? I could easily twist him round my little finger if I wanted to. Then try it. Perhaps I will. In the meantime, Mr. Dixon is quite oblivious to your charm or your existence. He is not. Then if he isn't, it's simply because he dislikes you intensely. And I dislike you intensely. Oh, I can assure you the feeling is mutual. And what have I ever done to you? If you really want to, I think you're just... <laughs> Arlette wins by five points. Arlette tests her offences well, don't you think? Not bad at all. Her attack's better than her defence, though. You are interested in fencing, Mr. Dixon? 
Oh, I used to be a long time ago. You criticize my defense. Would you care to test it? Perhaps you can give me a hint or two? No, I'm afraid. Oh, don't be afraid. No, no, I was going to say I'm afraid my fencing days are over. All right, come on. I won't make it too difficult for you, Mr. Dixon. On garde. Not at all. His fencing days are over. Who have I got to thank for the flowers? Will you stand up, please? Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much. You can all sit down. Yes, Mr. Dixon. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to stand up. Well, that's all right. Why are you late? I found I had a letter in my stocking, so I went upstairs to change it. You seem singularly unlucky with ladders, don't you? I find I've forgotten a book I want. In my room, you'll find a book called Art in the Renaissance. Go and get it for me, will you? With pleasure, Mr. Well, to go on where we left off last time. Michelangelo was only 24 years old when he created what is perhaps the most moving, the most spiritually mature, the most beautiful of all his works. The Pieta, now in the Vatican. On a rainy day in Paris, Funny how you came by way Sheltering in that small cafe A vacant and you were there <laughs> on a rainy day in town, <laughs> dreaming of the window of the rain. Children playing in the rain. No passers-by, just you and I. Why did you bring it into class in the first place? Because when we break at 11 o'clock, there is a talk on the home service. How to control the temper in trying circumstances. As I was saying... It... There must be something wrong with the switch. Put that in my study at once. I wouldn't say she exerted a particularly good influence over the other girls. And she seems to resent discipline. Her mother died when Arlette was very small. She's been neglected and been very much on her own. She's probably been spoiled. Mm -hmm. She has. And surrounded with material luxury. Her father is Jacques Tessereau. Oh, oh, the art dealer. Mm -hmm. He has a large house in London, but spends most of his time abroad. Marlette has met the strangest continentals. You see, Tessero is an entirely self-made man. He has this uncanny flair for antiques, which has brought him a fortune. And he's clever enough to want his daughter to acquire at least some of the education he lacks himself. I see. So Arlette is now handed on to us. And I feel we must do what we can to help her. Try and make allowances for her, Mr. Dixon. Of course, I'll do my very best. I'm sure you'll succeed. I'm sure she'll respond to you. And if she doesn't improve and you still think that I should have a talk with her, well, I'll gladly do so. Thank you so much, Miss Hallam. I hope I shan't have to bother you again. Now, 
Nice day, Miss Gilson. It is. Well, how much have you managed to practice this week? Only two hours a day, I'm afraid, Mrs. Dixon. And one hour of that devoted to scales and exercises? Oh, those awful peach and exercises. <laughs> how my hands ache. I know, especially your little finger. Well, yes. I think we'll have some tea before we get started. Thank you. Hey, Pat, I've been invited to Arlette's house on Sunday. Have you been asked? Oh, no fear of that. We're about as friendly as a snake and a mongoose. I don't know really why she asked me. Are you going, Julie? She lives in Mayfair. I've looked up a street in the guidebook. No, I don't particularly want to go, especially after that awful radio business in class. I can't make her out, Pat. She's beastly to Daddy, and then she asked me to her party. And if I refuse to go, it, it might make things even more awkward for Daddy. Mm, I can see that. She might think you were taking sides. Mm, I do think I ought to try and be friendly just for Daddy's sake. Does he know she's asked you? No, and I'm not going to tell him. Place like this on peanuts. <laughs> this way, please. This is a lovely house. It reminds me of some place. I've got it. The ladies' restroom in Radio City. Hello, mes enfants. You are early. I haven't finished dressing yet. What will you drink? Take what you like. Ah, let me see. Oh, Marie, um, I'd rather wait for tea, Arlette, if you don't mind. Tea, how English. But I forgot. You are the professor's daughter. Good afternoon, Edges. Is Monsieur Tesco at home? Uh, no, sir. He's in Paris. We don't expect him back tomorrow night. Well, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to collect the little Picasso. Oh, yes, sir. That little picture he left for you upstairs. Is Miss Arlette at home? Uh, just for the weekend, sir. She's entertaining some of her school friends to tea. I'll write a note for Monsieur Tesco. Don't bother, Andrews. I know my way. Yes, sir. Are they your brothers? Brothers? I have no brothers. These are all silly young men who think they are in love with me. They amuse me. Well, perhaps they really are in love with you. No. For then they would no longer be amusing. But surely it's terrible. You have no lipstick on, can you? I never use lipstick. Then you must start. Sit still. Ah, you have nice lips, you know. Doesn't your father like red lips? Oh, I don't know if he would like me. Perhaps he will change his mind anyhow. Who knows? Girls, come over here. Watch, I am turning this child into a woman. Takes more than pay to turn a rowboat into a yacht. Oh, she will learn. For she must look different. People behave how they look. Well, she looks jolly attractive anyway. Maybe it's inherited, Arlette. From her father. Now, what do you think of yourself, Miss Dixon? Oh, I look like someone else. Yes. You don't let your nipple up there. Oh, la, 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 la. Ah, Henri. And who said you could come in here? You did, my sweet. I knocked and you said yes. Well, does your yes mean no? Mm, no. No so often means yes. Would you please give this to your father when you see him? Alette, won't you introduce me? This is Henri Sinclair, a friend of my father's. He is not to be trusted. Oh. Jenny? Virginia. Joe? 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 Virginia? Virginia? Ivy and Jim. Charmante. And who's the baby? Mm, the little Julie. She's in my former little town. 
Her father is the new master. You have a master? Exactly. The fellow has my deepest sympathy. He should laugh more, your father. He is much too serious. Oh, but he's not. Only in school. Ah, uh ah. -uh. But I have only seen him in school so far. Come, Ivy. Let's dance. I'm not a very good dancer. I don't know any steps. It's only the first step, which is a bit tricky. The rest is just a question of rhythm. Oh, yes, that's what my mother says. Your mother? She has taught you the importance of rhythm. Oh, yes, you see, she's a marvelous pianist. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you like music? I love all the arts. I'm a painter. Oh, Daddy's written books about pictures and painters. His daughter would make a lovely portrait. I have a studio in Chelsea. Will you come and sit for me? I don't often come to London, only with Mummy on holidays. It's you I want to paint, not your Mummy. I am in the telephone book. My name is Henri Sinclair. Sinclair, you know. S-I-N, like Sin. Julie. Oh, she'll be here in a moment. She ought to have been home and in bed hours ago. Why? An evening after the girls will do her good. Besides, she's growing up, you know. Yes, but it's too late when she's going to get up early in the morning. I think I hear them. All right, all right, I'll go. Yourself, dear? Oh, yes, thanks, Mummy. It's certainly a wonderful house. Whose car was that? Arlette's. Or rather, her father's. You didn't tell me she was going to the Tesseract? I said she was going to a party given by one of the girls, which is perfectly true. But you seem to have taken such an aversion to this Arlette. Aversion? You mean you think I'm prejudiced? Oh, I know she's difficult in school, but... but you thought I was unreasonable. So you let Julie go without telling me. You don't know this girl, Helen. I do. She's not a proper friend for Julian. Daddy, now you're being unfair, which isn't a bit like you. I'm not being unfair. I'm only thinking of what's good for you. And what's all that stuff in your face? Nothing. Only a little powder and... Well, we were just playing about with our let's make up, Daddy. What's wrong with a little makeup anyway? You're too young, that's all. What sort of a party was this? I'm quite sure it was innocuous. I asked Julie. What sort of a party was this? It was a disgusting orgy, of course. like this before. I'll have a word with that Tessera girl in the morning. I've never known you like this before. I suggest we forget the whole thing. Oh, well, I, I'm for bed. I'll leave you to lock up. Time Julie went to sleep on. I think she is asleep. My daughter Julia. I believe you asked her to your home last night. 
Well, I'm afraid I must ask him not to do that again. I understand. Is that all? Yes, that's all. <laughs> Why do you hate me so? Well, I don't hate you. I don't hate anyone. But you will not even literally be my friend. Don't you see, Julius, I'm not younger than you are. If not in actual years, in experience. Uh, do you think she's too young to go out and drink cocktails and use makeup? Oh, please, Arlette. I'm sorry, Mr. Dixon, about yesterday. And then know I'm very bad and very behind in my work. But it is not all my fault. It's not your work I was talking about. It. It's the way we have. Please be a little patient with me, Mr. Dixon. I promise to be better in the future. Well, I'm sure you will. I don't like having to talk to you like this. It will be the last time. You must please help me. You see, I have not been very much at school. I was ill a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we start again from now? All right, from now. I'm sorry. I am so foolish and silly. It's never foolish and silly to talk things over, frankly. I think we'll understand each other better from now on. You are very good and kind, monsieur. And he's round for me, will you, Patricia? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, on the whole, I was very pleased with the essays. Particularly those of um, Eileen, and, uh, and Jill. Where's Arlette Tessera? She day late this morning? She went home this weekend and didn't come back. Oh, I see. Thank you. She wasn't well on Saturday morning. She told me she thought she'd strained her heart. Fencing. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we've got a lot of ground to cover this morning, so let's get on with it. One of the contemporaries of Michelangelo was Titian. You are very good and kind, monsieur. Very good and kind, monsieur. He was taken to Venice by his father, where he studied under Giovanni Bellini. One of his fellow students there and his friend was Giorgione. And when Giorgione died in 1511, Titian finished some of his pictures for him. Arlette is not well enough to come to the telephone. Is there any message? Yes, sir. I'll tell her. Mr. Dixon on the telephone. Did you tell him I was in? Yes, miss. What did he say? He said he was sorry that you were not enjoying good health. And he wished to a speedy recovery. something I want him to do for me. No? Quickly. Continental trunks, please. I want to speak to Paris. Passy 3721. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Miss Hallam's had a request from Arnett Tessera's father. He's very anxious she shan't get behind with her work because she's had to stay at home. What's he want? He wants me to give her some private tuition until she gets back to Littleton. He's very keen on her getting a thorough education in art. The education I gather from Miss Hallam that he lacks himself. He probably wants her to help him in his art business when she leaves school. 
Yes, still, I don't relish the idea of going to London two or three evenings a week. There's an excellent train service every half hour. And a bus from here in ten minutes to the station. A bit neatly on a car for you, knowing Arlette. Yes, of course, the money would be useful, wouldn't it? It certainly would. Miss Arlette is waiting for you in her sitting room, sir. Oh, thank you. How is she this evening? Oh, much better now, sir. Mr. Arnold Dixon. Good evening. Evening, Mr. Dixon. I'm so sorry I can't stand up, but I'm feeling so very weak. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Sit down, please. This must be an awful bother for you, but you see, my father insisted. Oh, it's no bother at all. I shouldn't have told him how clever you are and how much you have taught me already. No, I felt very guilty when I heard you'd strained your heart fencing. Must have been that afternoon when we were... Perhaps. You can never tell what will happen with the heart. No, I suppose not. Well, since you've been away, we... Thank you for your phone message. Well, I wanted to find out how you were. I was saying, since you've been away, we've got on to Leonardo da Vinci. And I think the best thing we can do this evening is to try and catch up on as much lost time as possible. I quite agree. And then the next time I come, we can get on with the poets. You know, away from school, you look so different. Different? Not so stern, much, um, much younger. Oh, come on now, please, you mustn't waste time. Oh, no, I don't want to waste time. But... But what? Why do you wear those funny spectacles? They are not even old ones. And you would be quite good looking without them. I wear them because I need them. Now, if you don't stop making personal remarks, we'll get on with our work. Come on. Well, dear, any news? Not much. Where are your glasses? In my pocket. We'll put them on, straining your eyes. Oh, do you know, I read an article the other day by an oculist. He said, the more you use glasses, the more you need them. <laughs> it strengthens the eyes to leave them off. What a funny idea. Either one needs glasses or one doesn't, I should <laughs> Well, Julie, you better hurry. Time's getting on. And you too, Arnold. Oh, Joe, yes. Come on, Julie, darling. Let's go, shall we? Oh. Bye, darling. Goodbye. Good evening. Where are your glasses? What? Oh, I, I dropped them on the bathroom floor. Most annoying, because you can't get a new pair for months now, dear. In the meantime, you cannot see anything? No, oh, I can see quite a bit, really. Can you? How are you this evening? Oh, not very well. In fact, I do not think I can concentrate on the lesson at all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I needn't have come, really, then. A cigarette? No, I only smoke a pipe at home. Oh. I think pipes are so unpoetic. It's funny you Englishmen are so um, prosaic. And yet you can have such great poets like Shelley. Oh, I love Shelley. I've been reading him preparing for our lesson, you know. Well, that's good. Before you go, can you read me this little poem? You read so well. And when I read it to myself, oh, I, I cannot always understand it. And I shall really see if you can read without your spectacles. <laughs> the fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single. All things, by a law divine, in one spirit meet and mingle. Why not I with thine? 
Yes, that was published by Lee Hunt in 1819. But there's one more verse. I will read it to you, and you can correct my English, yes? Mm. See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it disdained its brother. And the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What's all this kissing's worth? If thou kiss not me. Yes, you'll read very well. Well, if we're not going to have this lesson, I think I'd better be going. I can catch an earlier train. I mustn't tire you out if you're not feeling well. I will see you to the door. No, don't bother, please. Oh. oh. Not that. You all right? Oh, what happened? Would I going to get your doctor? Oh, no, I should be quite all right in a moment. Please stay with me a few minutes. Oh, of course I will. I want to come back to school very soon. I'm so much alone here. and all the lowdown about the private lessons. Were they very private? Mm. He's chucked his spectacles. Did you have a hand in that? Mm, of course. And that is only the first thing he is going to throw overboard. <laughs> oh, it is nice to see you back again, Arlette. I am glad to be back, really. I have missed so much, haven't I, Mr. Dixon? No, I don't think you missed very much. Oh, I'll see you in class, Arlette. You really better? Oh, thank you. I feel wonderful now. Look wonderful. And you, Mr. Dixon, you look very smart. If you will forgive me passing a personal remark this time. Well, my publishers have just accepted another book of mine. I thought I deserved a new suit. I am glad. And I am sure you have earned it. You work so hard and so seriously. Are you taking time off to come to the treasure hunt this afternoon? It is such a lovely day. Yes, yes, I promised Miss Hallam I'd try and get along. But surely you're not going treasure hunting. Very strenuous, you know. Oh, no. Not if you find the treasure in the end. I will be late for class. Oh, well, lovely day. Makes one feel quite young again. Nonetheless, time marches inexorably on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yenke. You must be wet through. Not so much. I found this hut. No, I found you. Oh, Mr. Dixon. I'm so glad you came. I could never have got back. We ought to start back at once. But I cannot walk. You will have to carry me. All right, put this one. Girl got stranded, is it? All right, you needn't snap my head off. What a pleasant perfume. I tell you, I have to carry her back to the coach. Well, I'll go and get these pressed. Oh, you needn't look so horribly guilty, dear. Darling, don't clean those shoes all over the carpet. What are you looking at me like that for? I wasn't looking at you. I was miles away. Do you see what I see? What's going on? Perhaps she's trying to see if our letter's also made of stone. Do you think he really has fallen for her? Fallen? Well, if he has, he'll come down with a big bang when he finds out it was only a joke. Hope the joke hasn't gone too far. We meet, we kiss, we part. What's all this talk about love? Is it such a great tragedy? For me, it was pleasant, amusing, yes. But now I want to forget. That won't be easy. Why not? Because to me, at any rate, this is... This is real. What was real yesterday is not real today and will not be real tomorrow. I don't understand you. Well, let I don't. You are hurting me. I think Julie's technique's improving, don't you? In auto, she practices often enough. She's only doing her usual hour. She's really only an hour. Well, you thought. All right, then, let's make an issue of it. Julie is practicing for an hour. All right, I'll go on, but she's finished. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on the floor. Julie, you better stop now and go and have your bath. Your pupil's books. What is it? 
It's just a silly joke. Silly, yes. Joke, no. It's pretty obvious to somebody that although you don't consider Arlette Tessero a fit friend for Julie, you find her company congenial enough. Well, if you want to make a fool of yourself, go ahead. I gave up my career to marry you and I can always go back to it. So don't worry about me or Julie. Helen. Forget us, but for heaven's sake, think about yourself. Arnold, remember your career, your books, your position. Don't let a ridiculous scandal ruin everything you've worked for. I wonder if those things are very important anyway. Not as important, apparently, as for landing with a girl not much older than Julie. If the consequences weren't so serious, it, it would be laughable. Helen. you and I'll come straight to the point. Mrs. Dixon, if you have heard any stupid gossip, there is nothing in it. Of course there's nothing in it. How could there be? Why could there not be? Why? Well, you're only a child. I'm not a child. I'm 18. And I assure you, Mrs. Dixon, that I am not interested in your husband. You should not fear. Fear? <laughs> what a foolish girl you are. I could go about with him, you know, if I wanted to. Go about? If I wanted to. My dear child, do you really believe a man of his ability and perception could possibly be serious about a silly little girl like you? Now, you go back to school. You know I really should put you across my knee and give you a good spanking. The way she spoke to me. Oh, I'll never forgive her. Never, never. Did she bear down on you at full sail? She said I was a child and threatened to give me a good spanking. How dreadfully funny. She is a fool. She has made a great mistake. But I bet you give her Arnold the cold shoulder from now on. I had intended to, but now. Now what? A wife should never underrate another woman. I will prove how quickly I can take a dear Arnold from her when I really try. Now, if a man wants to keep his shop open till midnight, or all night for that matter, like they do in New York, I say he should be allowed... Uh, have you any cigarettes? Yes, sir. I think I could manage to find you 20. Thank you very much. There we are, sir. Uh, Given up the pipe now? Well, just for a change, right? <laughs> well, as I was saying, sir, I'm a great believer in private enterprise. It was private enterprise that built up the empire. Well, look, now, I, I must go now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, as I was saying to this gentleman, if a man wants to keep his shop, he should be quite all right. I couldn't get back by the earlier train. I... I hope you remember to bring her little present. No, I'll have to give her some money. I... I was so busy all day today, I didn't have time to do anything. I called your publisher's office to remind you. And they said you weren't there and had no appointment. You've been with that girl, haven't you? Yes, I have. No, I was going to tell you anyway. We've always been such friends, you and I, Helen. I, I can't stand all this lying and deceit. 
I'd rather do anything than hurt you and Julie. Anything but give her up. Does she imagine she's in love with you? I don't know. If she isn't, why'd she want to go and see me all the time? And you? So the truant has returned. Oh, you haven't eaten my piece of birthday cake yet. You are mean. Fancy having to take yourself off to see your wretched publisher today, of all days. We had a lovely party. That's right, now you start. Well, why don't you say it? I'm a bad husband and a rotten father. Wrong, sir? No, I've just left some rather important notes on my desk. Oh, come inside, sir. I'll put the lights on in the form room so she can find it. Miss Soper or Miss Tessero's prep book. That's right, I remember now. I was interrupted. Could you get them for me with us? Well, the young ladies will be upstairs by now, I expect, sir. But like shirt isn't for another hour. I'll see if I can find them. Thank you. arranged reservations on the Golden Arrow. I will arrange everything. Do not worry. I shall count every moment until Monday. Oh, how nice. Paris, tous les deux, it will be heaven. speak to him personally. He's not at home. And Mrs. Dixon sounds very distraught. Of course she's not at home. Could I give him a message for you? I... I don't know. I... 
I don't suppose he'll be very late. Yes, I'll... I'll tell him you found. my foot. Come on, tell me all about it. Well, it's just that I think I'll be leaving Littleton soon. And I've loved it here. Leaving? But why? Because my father... He left the house, Pat. Oh, don't breathe a word, will you? Oh, no. Of course not. Oh, Julie, has it really come to that? We've always been so happy, we three. I expect he's just lost his head. They always say it's a serious sort of men, most likely to fall for a pretty girl. I wish there was something I could do. Pat, hmm? has your sister got an evening dress? I expect so, why? Well, do you think she'd lend it to me? I could ask her. And supposing I wrote a letter with my left hand, do you think anyone would recognize my writing? Why, well, I shouldn't think so. Julie, have you gone crazy? No, but I, I think there's something I can do. How's that left? Oh, enjoying life in her own way. <laughs> Don't we all? And who is her latest conquest? Someone old enough to be her own father. Not a scalp for her collection, it's all very tedious. Henry. Yes, dear. When you were going to paint me. The day after tomorrow. Hey. Yeah. What the heck? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I spilt my drink. I'm so Well, that's nothing new. Come on, lie down and keep quiet. Henry. Yes, dear. When are you going to paint me? Next week, dear. Next week. your explanation of this. Why can't I have some fun? Now listen, I'm your father and you I'm... You were my father. Well, apparently it's not the first time you've been to a party like this. I've even had anonymous letters about it, giving me the address and telling me if I went there tonight I'd see for myself. So you came and you saw your only daughter heading for moral disaster, is that it? it must be in the family. Julie, how dare you talk to me like that? And where do you meet those horrible people anyway? At our let's. At our let's, do you hear our let's? <laughs> <laughs> so do you think she's too young to go out and 
drink cocktails and use makeup? Oh, please, Arlen. I'm sorry, Mr. Dixon. <laughs> I don't think she's the kind of girl I like her to be friends with. <laughs> no, the pupil fetches things from our master. Oh, she's vain and spoiled. And ultra sophisticated. Oh, remember your career, your books, your position. Don't let a ridiculous scandal ruin everything you work for. Does she imagine she's in love with you? Love? We need to a kiss, we can't. What's all this talk about love? To me, Henry, this is... This is real. It was real yesterday, it's not real today. It will not be real tomorrow. It will not be real tomorrow. You won't go to any more parties like that. I promise. I don't want any more anonymous letters. That was the first and the last. I wrote it with my left hand. What? I wrote that letter. This dress belongs to Patricia's sister. The makeup is Mummy's. Something had to be done. I won't say it again, I promise. Let's go home, Daddy. All right. First, I must go and tell Arlette. Come in. Oh, Arnold. What is this visit so late? Has anything happened? You look so upset. I've come to say goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, goodbye. Oh, no. No, it's not true. Oh, you can't leave me. <laughs> Try and understand, my darling. You can't do this to me, no. I've been so happy packing all my things. Thinking about you and I together. I know, I know, but listen to me and do, do try to understand. If we went away together, I couldn't make you happy because, because there'd always be a shadow between us. You can't run away from your responsibilities as easily as that. You can run away from me easily enough. No, it's not easy. I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I hate myself for hurting you, but I'd hate myself even more if I ran out. I don't think you'd better come back to Littleton, do you? No. No, I'll go right away to the continent. Why don't you go to your father? You must try and forget all about me. And you? I shan't ever forget you, my darling. Bye. No, don't kiss me, I can't bear it. Go away, while I don't look. Coming back to Littleton. Why don't you go out and say goodbye to her? Me? All right, Daddy, if you'd like me to.
You? How did you get in? I was waiting outside for my father. And... Oh, you were. Were you? Frightened he might decide to stay, eh? Huh? Of course not. He fetched me from a party and he told me you weren't coming back to Littleton. And I wanted to say goodbye to you, Arlette. Another goodbye. Who next I wonder? Please don't be bitter, Arlette. I know you're very unhappy. Me? Unhappy? <laughs> but you wanted to go away with him. You little fool. Did you really think I was going away with your precious father? Of course I wasn't. I don't believe you. What do you think I want with a man more than twice my age? And on top of that, one of the stupidest and dullest men I know. How dare you say that about my father? And there's no need to pretend or tell lies. You were packing to go to Paris with him. That's why you are mistaken. If you look, you will see I'm going to Rome. And if you want to know, I shall be traveling on the Rome Express. With him. Now, he is a man any girl would fall for. He is clever, interesting, and very attractive. Your father set out to make me look a fool. Well, I made a bet to get my own back. And now I have made a fool of him. It was very easy. The only person you've made a fool of is yourself. I think you're despicable. And I hope I shall never see you again. Do not worry. You never will. I can go by sort of garden, sir. Oh, I'm glad I said goodbye to Arlette. Did she say anything? Yes, she said. She said you were a man any girl would fall for. Clever, interesting, and very attractive. Drive us as far as Littleton in Hertfordshire. Littleton? Hertfordshire? At this time of night? Oh, all right, Governor. You're being very extravagant, Daddy. It's worth it. to stop at the Rose and Crown to pick my things up. You needn't bother. They're here. Come in. You rang this? Yes, I did. This time it's my swimsuit that has disappeared, still being dried, I suppose. And where are my tennis shoes? Will that be all, Miss? Yes. No. I know I've forgotten what it was anyway. What kind of servant are you? Throughout the many years it has been my privilege to serve Mr. Tessero, whom I consider in many ways my superior, I have always endeavoured to tolerate his abominable daughter. But I fear without success. I have avoided putting my thoughts into words, but I think the time has now come when I may permit myself the liberty of saying that you ought to be put across somebody's knee and spanked hard. Furthermore, if it did not involve a certain loss of dignity on my part, I would not hesitate to do it myself. Good night. Dignity be blown. 